But I look at Indeed ads and what people put for postings and it is terrible. Everybody that complains that they can't attract high level coaches, I just go show me your, your Indeed ad. And I'm like, no high quality person would apply for this. Plain and simple, right? So the ad copy is massively important. Put a ton of time and energy into it. Not just, I need you to work these hours and this is your pay and this is my expectation of you. You are selling and recruiting. Like in sales, they say sell the vacation, not the trip. So I think once you've loaded your first, again, if you guys have been on Indeed, you know it's easy to put, create a duplicate of the one I've done before. So we would say, stop, spice it up. You know, take take some time to, to do something different that's really gonna stand out and, and make it unique. No different than how we say you should market your services because the world's noisy. And so you gotta stand out and get good at the skill of getting people's attention. And you know, that's what marketing is, is flagging someone down, waving them down and saying, look at me, look at me. And so that's what we're you know really calling you guys to do. Welcome to the Fitness Empire Podcast, where we show gym owners how to dominate their competition and build a massively profitable fitness business. Dustin and Matt collectively own 12 gyms and have a combined 30 years of experience in the fitness industry. They're here to help gym owners create an empire of impact and income. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Fitness Empire Podcast. I'm joined by my co-host, Matt Wilbur. I'm Dustin Bogle. We're here to help our fellow gym owners to grow their business so they can have a greater impact and income and help other people to build generational health while they are also building their generational wealth. And so we are essentially in the middle of a series because we want to take this podcast and kind of go a little bit of a different approach. Most podcasts do really quick surface level discussions about things and they kind of rotate through hundreds of subjects where we're going to go deep dive into one subject and aim to permanently solve it for you or at least long term solve it as much as possible. And so the series that we're currently in right now is all about recruitment, talent, coaches, getting your dream team assembled so that you can delegate and elevate. And so today's topic is all about how to find rockstar coaches, where to find them, what are some places you can go to, what are some sources, some some places you can tap into. And I have over 12 of them that I'm going to go over with you. And I know Matt has some bonus ones too that he's going to drip in here, or he's going to, you know, drip in some little strategies that are are kind of like similar to what I do. Cause although we align on how we run our businesses. We both have little nuances that we do differently, and that's okay. You guys do too for the way you run your gyms. Your goal is to take what we teach, assimilate it, and apply it into your business. So that's what we're here to talk about. And I'm fired up because I know, again, I've seen what having a dream team can do, how quickly your business can grow when you have the right people. And I've seen how much it can stagnate and it can even go backwards when you have the wrong people. Have you seen that, Matt, with your own business as well? 100%. And this is the the number one issue in the fitness industry. And I'm just going to tell you, it's going to get worse. Um, So you need to get really good at these things if you want longevity in your business. And if you want to change from being the the trainer to becoming the, the CEO, you need to be really good at what we're going to talk about and be really consistent with this. And and one of the most important things before we get in this topic is just realizing, you know, Dustin has incredible strengths. I have strengths. We both have weaknesses. We have things that we like to do and and don't want to do. So part of the strategies too, is finding the things that you're going to be consistent with. Ideal world, you do all of these because there's not going to be one thing that if you just do this one thing, then man, you're going to be able to recruit rock stars Anytime you want to recruit them, you got to be doing a lot of things consistently. And when you do those consistently, they're going to compound to finding the the rock star individuals. But it's not just about finding the rock star individuals. The next series is really going to be talking about, okay, they've applied. What do you do with them? Like, what's the interview process? How do you filter them? And then once once we offered them a job, what do we do with them to turn them into rock stars? 100%. And the last piece I'll have before we continue on is most A players already have a job. So if you're looking for rock stars, most of them already have a job. So part of the recruitment strategy needs to be how do we 
go after them. And a lot of the strategies that Dustin has lined up for you are going to be allow you to attract other people that maybe already have a job. And you need to figure out how do I get them interested over here? It's no different than if a client already likes a gym that they're at, how do you get them to go from a gym they already like that they're comfortable with to come and try your gym, right? And it's probably not going to be one thing that does the trick. It's going to be a multitude of things today, but really want to give you all the cards, lay them all out on the table for you so that you can start executing and start attracting high quality people because the level that you can do this will really determine the success in your business and, and honestly, the happiness that you have in your business and in your life. 100%. And one of the things that I, I want to point out is there's a great phrase from Mother Teresa. Okay, She said, you can do what I can't do. I can do what you can't do. Together, we can do great things. And I love that quote because it's essentially a sign that you're right. I have strengths learn what they are, become self-aware, accept them, and now go find people who are going to be able to do your your weaknesses or just you know your non-strengths. And that's exactly what we want to do here. And what we're going to talk about coaches, which if you guys are the type of gym owners we align with, which are gym owners that started as coaches. And as Matt said, we go from trainer to CEO. That can be the hardest thing to release because you started in that seat. You love coaching. You want to be on the floor. It takes a lot of willpower and discipline to let it go and give it to somebody else so that you can go and move on to being a true business owner and working on the business tasks. And some people have a hard time letting that go. So understand that that's just part of the journey. That's the pain we're asking you to walk through because it is what's required to grow your business. You have to let that go. But we want to show you where to find quality people so that they do the job the same as you. Maybe they even do it better, which is when you really have the dream team, as I call it. So I want to start by explaining what I hear often from my clients and the fellow gym owners. Typically, we're, we're getting really good reviews on our coaches. They're saying they're fantastic. They're professional. They're on time. They're so polite. They're reliable. All these great things. I love how they remember my first name. So I you know, take pride in that because the coaches are what we're selling. And so I have to really be particular about who we let in. And then the same thing is said from gym owners. They'll come and visit my locations if they're vacationing in California or you know, they just happen to be in the area. And they'll say, hey, if I had the coach that you have on your team, I would crush it. Your, your team's top notch, Dustin. Man, if only I had coaches like that in my area we would get to another level. You're lucky. You got great coaches in your area. And I and I I hear that from coaches who visit from distance, but I even hear from coaches who are gym owners that live in my area. So if we have the same talent pool, that that is not something you can use. You can't say, oh, the coaches are different in your area. They're not. There's coaches everywhere. It, it comes down to you and what you're offering. And so, like Matt said, we want to look at this as a side-by-side -side comparison. So if you guys are watching this on YouTube, you can see you know, when I'm doing my hand gestures, if you're on YouTube or podcast, you have to listen. But the job title is just like your headline on your marketing. So how are you getting someone's attention? Then the job description and the opportunity is kind of like the sales copy on your ads. Then the job compensation is going to lead to your lead quality, right? If you have really low comp, you're not going to get the most qualified coaches. You have really competitive comp, you're going to have really great coaches, right? Then there's the onboarding. How are you onboarding the coach and teaching them how to do things? How you expect things to be done is like a client onboarding. This is how we behave here. This is what I expect of you. This is my standard that I have. And then you got the retention. Funny enough, when you do those four things in that order, your job retention, your team retention is high and your client retention is high. And so they are side by side identical. So most of us have that really good business brain when we're thinking about marketing, getting new leads, apply that to recruiting team members. The same thing. We can recruit, just get somebody into the door and we skip the onboarding. Well, if you did that to a client, do you expect them to stay long? They would leave in a heartbeat, right? So like if you rush these things with your team, this is going to happen with your team. You have team turnover. And I'm starting with this because before I give you the strategies of where to find people, I want to make sure you got your stuff dialed in on the back end when you get them in. And we're even going to do an episode on this. We're going to continue this, this series and go over onboarding and fulfillment because we don't want to leave you hanging. We want to help you again, solve this thing all the way. So essentially, again, th that's just the side-by-side -side picture I want to paint for you guys. So we're going to get into the actual strategies, the fun stuff, the where to find coaches, the number one thing people bring up to us all the time. Okay. So first things first, guys, we want to look at a combination of, 
you know, places just like we do with leads. When we're trying to get people through the doors for our gym and our service, we typically want to have five, 10, 15 marketing rods in the water. Well, you need to do the same thing for recruitment. If you only put a job posting on Indeed and stop, that is where the fault is, is you're not spreading out your message in a lot of different platforms. So just the same effort you do to get leads, you probably have to do the same effort, if not more, to get coaches because it's less people, right? You're trying to find one coach, maybe two, but you're trying to go find 20 clients. So like if you're trying to find a very precise person, you might have to work harder to find that, right? So the the places that we're going to kind of dive into here to get started, number one, the most common we probably all know about is Indeed. All right. There's competitors. There's monster.com. There's a lot of others, but somewhere where you can put a job posting up, you can write about it. Now, what I like about Indeed at the time of this posting or, or, or this podcast, they just changed the way that they charge. And now it used to be a daily rate, kind of like Facebook daily ad spend, 10, $15 a day. Now they changed it to uh, they give you applicants. And when somebody passes, I think it's a 72 hour time frame sitting in your Indeed account, you get billed for them. And so in 72 hours, you can read through them, you can deny them, you can say, yes, I want to talk to them. You can even possibly by then get on a call and screen them and decide they're not a good fit. And you can remove them from your Indeed account as an applicant and not get billed for them. They're only wanting to bill you for like qualified people. And it's because indeed, I like this upgrade because number one, you're not being billed for time and, and, and there's no production coming from them as a company. They're forced to bring you quality, but what they're wanting you as the business owner is to be engaged in your Indeed account, to be logged in, to be checking it because they would see all these people would complain, hey, I go on Indeed, I apply a bunch of jobs, but no one gets back to me because the owners were not logging in and checking their Indeed like they should be. And so that gave a negative experience to the employees looking for work. So they incentivize us, the employers, to be in our account actively. And so I would encourage you guys to take a look at it if you haven't in a while. It's in your favor. One helpful tip I'll give you is that they actually, I see different results, kind of like ad copy where you put different headlines, you see different results. When I put a different job title. So it's weird. At one gym, certified trainer does better. And like group fitness trainer uh, doesn't do so good, but it's the complete opposite at another one. And so I would say throw up two or three different versions. The description could be the same, literally just change the job title because people say, I got to add up, you know, I put up certified trainer. I'm like, did you try two or three or four other different job titles? No, that's, that could be it. So strength and conditioning coach, group fitness trainer. If you do boot camp, boot camp instructor, anything where it says the same thing a different way. And it's interesting, but you will get different results by using a different job title. Matt, any ninja tactics for you? I've also found some, yeah, I also found like uh, the quality of person can really highly be dictated by the title that that you've also put in there. So um, if you're not finding the type of person that you want, maybe you're attracting the wrong lead by, by your headline or by what it looks like you're offering. Uh, make sure that you're, you're switching that up as well. So if, if for some reason it's not working, switch it up. No different than if you had a sales page and you had a headline and it wasn't converting, the first thing you go is I need to change my headline, right? Or it's an email with the subject line. And if the subject line sucks, no one's going to open it or move forward, right? So it's got to make sure that's it. that's really, really, really important. The other thing on Indeed is updating it every every two to three weeks. Indeed when you first apply, when you first put up your um, ad on Indeed, you're going to show up at the top. And then the longer your ad runs, the the lower it's going to go down. It's no different than like Google rankings. Where do you want to be on a Google page? You want to be at the top. So you need to make sure that you are refreshing it every two to three weeks. So if you start finding that you were getting leads and now you're not getting leads, I would highly recommend that, that you update that um, and, and that will help um, drastically. But I have found we are getting uh, a lot more leads in uh, with the new way that Indeed does it, which is which is really cool. And then the the other thing with your whatever you're listing it as, one thing that you could do is if you do have higher level positions inside of your company, offer those higher level positions, and then what ends up happening is high quality people will apply for that. And then you have the opportunity to say, hey, you're not a right fit for this, but you'd be a good fit for that, right? So like, for example, 
if you're having, if you have one-on-one trainers or small group trainers, and then you have, you're looking for a group fitness trainer. If you were to put in there for like private one-on-one or semi-private, the person that you're going to typically attract for those type of positions is going to be a higher level person than a group fitness instructor. But that person might not be actually be a good fit for your one-on-one or semi-private. And you might be able to push them down into the group training, but they never would have applied for the group training because they were only looking for for the other positions. So those are some tactics and, and, and strategies that you can use. Love it. And yeah, again, we're just spending a lot of time on this because it is one of the best sources. And I just see people give up, give up on it too early. And I think that, again, it takes some time to finesse and to play around just like Facebook ads or any type of ads you're running. I would also say put an informal version. It's weird, but when I put up literally rock star coach, high energy coach, um, best coach in the world, just to be silly, I got a lot of applications because it stood out. So don't put the formal titles, put you know some fun titles in there too, just to play around and to see how it works. And then another layer deep on that, which like is the actual posting itself. So I, I think if we want to go into that part real quick, a lot of people's postings are terrible. It's pretty much what's in it for me. What am I looking for? Here's the hours. Here's the pay. You really need to one your headline inside of the post, right? Like you need to hook them and go, Hey, I would be interested in this. And how is it to Dustin's point? How can you be unique and different than all the other gyms looking for a personal trainer? And another way that you can stand out in your ads too, is by being able to how many boxes can you check with the benefits to signing bonus to whatever Indeed allows you to do. Obviously, you have to be honest with what you provide, but you can provide a sign. Like you don't, you can click signing bonus, but only a certain amount of people would be eligible for that signing bonus. So if you have the intention that somebody could actually get it, then put it there. Also, the pay is substantially important. So if you do have a range of pay, I would put the range of pay versus not like a low range of pay either. Can you? Uh, for example, for our coaches, the pay range is between $38,000 and $45,000 to start. If we only put where most of our coaches are going to come on at forty dollars or $42,000, if we only put forty dollars or $42,000, we may not be able to attract the same amount of talent as at $45,000. So if you have a range, everyone's going to look at the top of the range and go and think, I can make that much money. Versus if you actually just put the, the lower range, then you're you're shooting yourself in the foot. But I look at Indeed ads and what people put for postings, and it is terrible. And everybody that complains that they can't attract high-level coaches, I just go, show me your, your Indeed ad. And I'm like, no high-quality person would apply for this. Plain and simple, right? So the ad copy is massively important. Put a ton of time and energy into it, not just... I need you to work these hours and this is your pay. And this is my expectation of you. You are selling and recruiting. Like in sales, they say sell the vacation, not the trip. Most people are selling the trip inside of their ads. Sell them the vacation. How awesome it's going to be if they decide to come in and work for you. The other thing that we like to do inside of our ads is put links. Like you can't hyperlink in an Indeed ad, but we put links to videos of our company that really shows our culture and how much that we pour into to our coaches. Most people don't add that stuff. And taking the time to put the pictures of your culture inside of those ads, do it at a high level. This is the first impression of your entire business. Somebody is going, I'm looking for a job or maybe the uh, the job matched whatever their description was that they're looking for. And Indeed said, hey, a new, a new listing that matches what you're looking for is, you know, that's what they're going to go see. Make a great first impression. And then the last thing on Indeed that we didn't talk about is you can pay to search for people. A lot of high quality people, again, are not looking for a job. So unless they get a notification that a new job's available and you stand out and you're like, all right, I'm interested, you're going to have to reach out to them. So you're going to have to do cold reach outs to them to get them interested. But if your ad is good, they're going to go look at that and then it, it might pique their interest. I can't tell you how many people 
that we've hired in the last 18 months that have come from cold outreach to them, people that already had a job, they're already happy where they're at, but they saw what we provided and it piqued their interest that allowed us to start having a conversation and get our foot in the door. Love so that's that's my two cents on Indeed. Oh, that's good. And and yeah, we, uh, it's great to go over what to actually post. I think once you've loaded your first, again, if you guys have been on Indeed, you know, it's easy to put, create a duplicate of the one I've done before. So we would say, stop, spice it up, you know, take take some time to to do something different that's really going to stand out and, and make it unique. No different than how we say you should market your, your services because the world's noisy. And so you got to stand out and get good at the skill of getting people's attention. And, you know, that's what marketing is, is flagging someone down, waving them down and saying, look at me, look at me. And so that's what we're you know really calling you guys to do. So I love that. And a big thing to call out is how are you going to grow and develop them and make them a better coach, make them a better right. person? Like, Again, what's in it for them if they were to come on board with you guys? It's not a job. It's not a paycheck. One of the, the basic human needs is the, the want to grow. How are you going to grow them and develop them when they come on board inside of your culture, inside of your company? So start thinking through that lens with your, your job offerings. And I guarantee you, you will attract much higher quality people. Yes. Love it. All right. Well, we're going to move on to an old school, but still re old reliable, and that's good old Craigslist. So again, I don't think people know that you can put a job posting on Craigslist. They think of it as a place to go sell stuff, but I will tell you, it still gets millions of unique visitors a month. It's a well-known name, and it was the Facebook marketplace before it was the Facebook marketplace. So I would definitely go on there. It's pretty low cost too, guys. It's only 10 bucks a day. It's a great place that a lot of people sleep on, but I've gotten some great coaches on there who are just looking around to buy stuff, you know, like gym equipment or whatever. And then they saw, again, our logo or, you know, fitness people tend to be drawn to fitness stuff. When we're driving around town, we see the word nutrition. We see the word gym. We see the word fitness more than the average person. Someone else drives right past to say, oh, I didn't even know there was a gym there because they don't have those filters built in, you know, and we just we see it. So if you're just scrolling and you're looking at like mattresses or boats or whatever, and then a fitness logo pops up, that will stop you in your tracks. Go everywhere. Spread your marketing message all over the place. So that that's that's a quick one. But the other one I was going to point out that's a paid source is Facebook ads. No problem. A gym owner will invest in getting new leads to the doors to join a trial, a challenge. But then when you say, have you tried paying Facebook to get you your next coach like, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm just going to try to find somebody for free. I'll wait till I bump into the right person. Are you putting in the right energy and resources to solve this problem? If you really need a new coach, we don't want you to hire at a desperacy. Every time I've done it, I've regretted it. So I'm not trying to push you to do that. But I do want you to explore all your options and really go hard on this and attack it. Facebook, when you load up a job posting, it catches on that you're doing that. It'll immediately say, do you want to post this as a job posting? And say, yeah, I do. And you can press boost. And now in the interest, you can put, show this to people who are interested in fitness. And you know, lo and behold, you're going to hit the trainers with your ad and essentially get applications. And I'll tell you, um, I've done all three of these. I'll, I'll put on Indeed, Craigslist, and Facebook, and all three of them bring me different people. So I'm not getting duplicate leads. It's not the same person. I just am spreading my message to where different people hang out so that I can get the most leads in the least amount of time. And so essentially, this is another way to do it. And you could take those creatives, like Matt said, if you have a video where you show your company culture, something that can really, coaches are very impact driven. So I think one of the best things you can do, if you have a client interview or you have a story and you say, do you want to join our team and make an impact like we made with this person? And you put that client story, they'll say that I, I want to get behind that because at the corporate gym, they're breathing down my neck, making sure I sell enough supplements and bars. And I don't like that. And they're making me be pushy and I'm impact driven. So you guys are impact driven. I'll I'll go work with the small business instead of the big box gym, because that's the type of people I want to be around. Play on that and put that in your marketing creative to draw people. Matt, have you ever tried a Facebook ad as a job posting? Yeah. One thing that helps with that, though, is if you have asked your clients and ask your team members to share that on their social media to increase the reach on that. 
And then make sure that the creative that you're using, either the, the images or the videos that you're using are really calling out and showing how you guys are unique and different at your gyms. Show your coaches being super enthusiastic and in, in helping change clients' lives. I like to actually do like a carousel type of thing, and then you yeah. can put some descriptions, right? So it kind of highlights all the benefits of working with us, but then obviously showing our team and the impact that they're having on clients' lives. And, and really, it's like, hey, if you want to be a part of something like this, obviously apply for what we're doing. And, and to Dustin's point, it's it's not one thing that is going to, like, indeed is the most important thing, in my opinion, from a recruiting standpoint, make sure that you got that locked in and then layering these things in because you just never know where you're going to find that next rockstar coach. And you really want to make sure that you have as many ways of recruiting as possible. Love it. All right. So we covered some paid. Now I want to speak to people who might feel like they're on a budget and, and they want to, you know, explore finding coaches in another way. So we're going to go into some word of mouth type of scenarios. So the first thing is, guys, coaches tend to be friends with other coaches or follow other coaches or they just have their finger on the pulse of what's going on in the local market with other coaches. Maybe they're eyeing competition. Maybe they're just following them for inspiration. Who knows? But essentially, I would say to your coaches, do you guys know anybody else who'd be a good fit for our team? You guys know our standards. You know our culture. You know how we do things around here. So you're going to pre-screen them for me. And you'll know who's a good fit and who isn't. So don't send me somebody you don't think is a good fit. Who do you know that you think you can connect with me and put them in a group text with me? Or if you don't know them, you've just been following them, give me their Instagram, give me their, their you know email. I'll reach out to them. But you could, if you want to take those Indeed funds and move it over here to make an incentive for your team, you could give a finder's fee. Say, whoever helps me find our next coach gets $100 or $500. I'm putting a bounty out. You find me our next rock star coach. You get paid instead of me paying Indeed. And that way you're leveraging the people in your facility. And I feel like you could do that not only with your coaches, but you could also extend this out to your clients because your clients might have been shopping around and have worked with other coaches in the area. They too are following other gyms and looking at other coaches and considering who to work with. And so they might've said, oh yeah, I worked with this coach before I joined you guys. He was over here at this gym and he was always busy. I can give you his phone number. It's like, cool, let me let me give him a call. If he's busy and he's got something going on and he's happy, but I'll let him know that the door is open if he ever wants to have a conversation. I was just going to say that that goes back to the first episode on this about who you are as a leader and as a company. Like if you take care of your team members, like they're going to want their friends or their coworkers or people that they know in the industry to come work with you because of the experience that you provide and that you grow and develop them and that you actually care and you take care of them. If you don't do any of those things, this strategy will not work. That's why we said the foundation is who are you as a leader at the beginning, because that is hypercritical for any of these strategies to actually work. What we provide is a $500 finder fee for our coaches after 90 days. So if that person comes on and makes it past the 90 days, we will give that person $500. And one of the, the most important things with your team being a referral source is you need to remind them, hey, we're hiring. Do you guys have anybody that you think would be a great fit for our culture? Because if you're not prompting them, and if you look at any behavior change, you need to have a prompt for them to, to do the behavior that you want, then it has to be easy for them to do. So maybe you're like, well, I told our team that we have a referral fee, but then you never talk about it. You're never prompting your team to take action or think about yes. the person that may be a good fit. So you need to be reminding them all the time because here's the other thing. No coach likes to work on a team that is short staffed, nor do they like to work with thoroughbreds don't like to work with donkeys, right? So they are going to want to bring the best people on board. And then honestly, the, the best time for referrals is when somebody first comes on board and they're in the honeymoon period. And they used to work at other gyms. I can't tell you how many gyms we have rated their coaches. So once we get one great coach, uh, they tend to recruit the other great coaches from that location or they go, yeah, there's no no good coaches from that location. So when they do apply, we know that probably not going to be a good fit for us. And they actually pre-screen those people for us, which is really great. But the biggest learning lesson here for me is always 
You need to make sure that you're reminding your team and you're prompting your team that we are looking. Please share our post. Please reach out to your network and and help us recruit. And if you do and that person stays after 90 days, we'll give you X, Y, and Z bonus. And then when you do give the bonus, make sure you make it a big, massive deal. You do in front of the entire team because whatever gets recognized, whatever gets rewarded is going to get repeated. Love it. Love it. All right. Well, good. And, uh, you know, what I was going to say in terms of like pushing this out to your clients as well, is they always get the feeling that someone's leaving. Why are you looking for coaches? Like what's going on around here? You know, is my favorite coach leaving? So we always say, Hey, our fit fam is expanding. Things are going so well. we got so many members. We need to expand our team. So we're looking to add a coach. And when you use that particular language, now they will go and help you. But if they think they're going out to find the replacement of their favorite coach, they're probably not going to be as excited to go find you one. So again, make sure you're phrasing it the right way. So that is but even with that, like you got to remind them, you got to prompt them and you got to make it easy. So when I say make it easy, provide them the link that somebody needs to apply. Where does the person need to go? Like, don't make it vague and don't make them do any work. If you make them work. So the other side of behavior change, it's got to be easy to do. If you have a prompt, but it's not easy to do, the person has to be incredibly motivated to take action. So yeah. make sure when you're doing these things, give a prompt, right? And then make it as easy as possible for them to do the activity that you want. So if you want them to share a post, make sure you give them the link that they need to share the post. If they have to go and search your Facebook page to go and find the link or find your job posting so that they can share it, they are not going to do it. So again, give them the prompts and make it easy. And uh, the the truth is like, as much as you think that they know that you have a job posting and you're looking for coaches, they don't know unless you tell them. So you got to make sure that you're prompting them all the time. Hey guys, it's Dustin with the Fitness Empire. And I want to share with you an exciting opportunity. All right. Myself and Matt Wilbur, we are putting together a Fitness Empire mentorship. So what is this exactly? This is for gym owners who want guidance, coaching, and mentorship to get them to the next level of business growth, all right? Now, this is only for people who are actually interested in creating transformation in their clients and in their community, okay? If you're just sales-driven and marketing-driven, we are not about that. We do give you strategies and tactics, but we want to solve the deep-rooted issues within every fitness business that will lead it to be a generational business, meaning it'll be around for decades to come. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then I wanna encourage you to join the Fitness Empire Mentorship. And so what you wanna do is you wanna go to yourfitnessempire.com, read all about the mentorship, and if it sounds like something that speaks to you, then I encourage you to sign up because enrollment is open now. This is not something that we are actively allowing enrollment all year round, we have specific periods where you can join the program. So if that is something that you want to join because you need that help, you want to learn from people who have 30 years of combined experience in over a dozen operating gyms, then I want to encourage you to come in and work with us. So go to that link, yourfitnessempire.com and check out to learn more about the program. Let's get back to the podcast. So guys, that's source four and five. We're going to go to a six one which is also inside of Facebook, but it could apply to Instagram as well and other you know, uh, social medias, but essentially put out what I call a convo starter or a hand raising post, which is just this one line question. So you could say, we're hiring coaches at you know, ABC Bootcamp, DM me if you're interested. And you don't know who's following you. I always have coaches that are following me and watching us. And now you just gave them an, a door to DM you. And I often get DMs. And you don't have to just start stop at your profile. You could put on your profile. I think that's a great way to do it. But also go into local groups where people are talking about community news or maybe as a job group, uh, group. I've seen local job groups where, you know, it's like jobs in X area or buy, sell and trade groups where people are just selling stuff and buying stuff and it's Facebook marketplace. Go in all of those groups and put up your job posting. And I would test because sometimes I found the formal job posting, you know, description, comp, you know, click here to apply or the informal one line question with the Facebook backgrounds just have different results in different areas. So test those out and, and you know, get more leads. And that's just a, hu- a hustle version. There's like you're just putting out word of mouth. 
oftentimes I've even seen when I go in these groups, because the people in there, they all don't know me. If there's 30,000 locals, they'll tag, you know, hey, cousin so-and-so, didn't you say you wanted to get into coaching? Hey, you know, uh, brother, like you should apply. And like all these people are now sending me leads, right? So just again, you got to make a lot of noise. And guys, the beauty of all this that we're even saying, this doesn't take a lot of time. Like if you put in the effort and you build that job posting, now it's just a matter of copy and paste and putting in all these different platforms. And, you know, you could probably get this done in an hour, hour and a half most if, you know, you just focus and you turn off your phone and your distractions and your computer and all this stuff, right? Just if this is a problem in your business, give it focused attention. It will not go away until it gets that. 100%. Um, I think one big, big thing on that, which kind of goes into uh, another source down below is what we like to do is a lot of gyms post their their coaches and their trainers of who they are and their information. And uh, me and my wife like to go and friend them. Um, so that strategy works really well once you have friended them, right? And then they get to start seeing who you are as a leader and all the things that you're doing in your gym and the results that you're getting to for your clients. And they start going, my gym doesn't do that. My gym doesn't offer that. I'm not getting clients results like that. Like they start seeing the opportunity from afar. And the truth is grass is always greener on the other side, right? Yes. They're going to start going, man, like I'm, I wish I could work there. If you're doing things correctly and what you're posting uh, and putting out into the world, uh, assuming you're doing the right things, but then you add those people and you don't even have to cold outreach them. Cause what I want to do is be like, Hey, I saw that you're a trainer at this gym. Hey, you're looking for a job with us. I would, I would not do that. Cause think about it from my perspective, the minute somebody adds me on Facebook and then they hit me up with a DM instantly, I'm like, Oh, they're just trying to sell me something versus get them indoctrinated in your world. And then you do a, uh, Hey, we're, we're hiring. If you want to be a part of a company that does X, Y, and Z, send me a message. That's going to be a lot more, more effective. Well, good. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, hopefully this is helpful for you guys and you're getting value from it. Another one that I was going to point out, basically sending the same offer out to your email list. You know, essentially we said, tell your members, tell your team, go post it in groups, go post it on your page, go on Indeed. But if you have 2000 emails, like, email your list and just say, Hey, it's okay to hit them with a, with a job posting. And you never know if that person is connected to the person you're going to hire. Is there, is there a coach on your email list? Probably not as likely, but is there someone that knows a coach? Well, I would rather hit a quick email and be able to just shout my message to two, 3000, you know, emails, whatever you got immediately, you know, like at the snap of a finger, everybody now knows about this job posting and they know about the finder's fee. Cause that's again, the, I think the, the big thing that I would offer all three groups with my team, my clients, and then my email list, everybody can get hands on this finder's fee. And who knows, maybe they'll turn around and say, save it. I want to apply it to your service. You know, like you, you, you might have that. You could also come up with a cool incentive where it's worth double in service instead of paying it out. Like, you can get creative with that, but essentially that is something that could help people, you know, like, and, and you're kind of putting a bounty on them, helping you grow your business. So that that's another source. Final one I'll put out here. That's like a word of mouth type of approach is um, the NASM job board. So if you guys don't know about this NASM to help their certified trainers get work, they created a job posting website. And so you could go there and you can, and employers can post for free. And it's literally nasmjobs.com, nasmjobs.com. And you can post, you know, I'm, I'm an employer, I'm a gym and put your job posting and you can look for trainers and send them a message and say, Hey, I see you're in this area. Depending on what market you're in, it's a little bit of a smaller pool because it's only showing you NASM certified trainers. So it's not going to show you, you know, ACE and ISSA and all these others. But hey, it's another place to go and search. And I know I've talked with a lot of gym owners that are just in more rural markets or they're just in an area where there's just not as many trainers as in like a dense city. You got to go try all the avenues you can to find these people. So uh, that's something that you can do. And and more of a long-term play. And I know, Matt, we're going to go on a future episode on a, on a whole rabbit hole of the internship program and how this could be something you could do. But NASM also has a program you can list your gyms under called the Gym Internship Program. And that is their version of an internship. 
and it's an upgrade when you get a NASM cert I think it's an extra five hundred dollars and they promise to connect you with a gym termship partner gym and then you will get eight weeks of experience right out of getting your NASM internship so for you as the gym owner that is free labor that you get to, to get like an extended interview you get to see them for eight weeks and you don't got to pay them a dime because they paid 500 extra to NASM to get this gym internship but here's what happens you get NASM certified and they send a list of their partner gyms and they say pick which one you want to you know get connected with and then one of their reps will say hey this person chose your gym they're a recently certified trainer the only way for them to send them to you is to get on that list so contact N NASM and get your gym listed and now they will send people to you I'll be honest volume wise I might get two a year but those are two people that I wouldn't have and actually one of our best trainers that was with us three to four years came from that so it's like was it worth it for me to fill out that quick application absolutely the other area that kind of in line with job postings is universities as well so not an internship every university has a list of former students and or they have job postings inside of that university that they can post out for so as you are creating an internship and you're creating relationships with schools being able to say hey we have we have some openings would you be willing to to send this out for us so if you have the relationships with the schools and you offer something beyond just a part-time low paying group fitness job they'll be happy to to be able to send that out right because there's not a lot of people that offer that but you have to have a relationship with them for them to be willing to do that. They also have different exercise science groups at different universities that you can try to infiltrate. Luckily for me, I have my exercise science degree, so I'm, I can be in some of these groups. But again, those are exactly the people that, that you are looking for. So you never know when somebody is looking for a job. You never know when that prompt comes and they're highly motivated to, to make a change in their life. And a lot of these little prompts are you just never know, but when that time does come and it does click, that you are front and center, no different than what you want to do with your leads coming into your gyms. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, we're going to be getting into that because that is uh, on my list as well as an internship program. And so essentially, this is the third and final category, guys, is your hustle sources, hustle for your muscle. It's going to take time. You're going to have to work for it, but it's going to be worth it. And so the first one is going to take a lot more effort, but if you need a coach and you need to kind of, you know, dig deep to find one, this is an option. And that is to turn a client into a coach. Some people can kind of raise their nose and their eyebrow and say a client as a coach, no way. But at the end of the day, guys, all of us had zero experience. You were the equivalent of a client. You never ran one session. You didn't know anything you were doing and you had to start, right? So just rewind back to that day and that is the client you could absolutely help them get certified you can absolutely teach them coaching cues most stuff that coaches know is teachable but you need to put it into the right person and they need to have the right traits and they need to be the right character and they need to fit your core values and if that all exists the teachable stuff you can put into somebody but if you have somebody who has all those knowledges and then they're the bad the wrong person and they're a bad fit for your team it'll never work you have to have the right person and then give them the skills, right? Obviously we'd love for it to be both on the front end, but sometimes you gotta put on the hustle muscle and transition them. Well, one of the cool things about uh, recruiting from within with your clients is you've probably already seen them at their worst. You you can tell, do they have emotional intelligence? Like, do they have mm -hmm. the ability to control their emotions? Are they you know, a good culture fit? You'll be able to tell if they're a good culture fit. Some of our best, and it's not always clients that we hire from, um, not always a coaching person that, that we hire. We've had some administrative type roles, but it's like, this person is such a dynamic person. They're so amazing. Like yes. you already know what they're like. You're not guessing in any capacity and vice versa. You have seen them at their worst. They have shown you their character. They have shown you how they're going to behave inside of your business. So some are going to be a heck no based off of that. Right. But we've also had some people that fit our criteria of what we're looking for a coach, but they're actually just working out in our gym. And now they saw the job posting and now they're interested because they want to be a part of our culture. So you might even have some people that have degrees and certifications and have a ton of fitness experience that are working out 
as clients inside of your gym and they want to be a part of what you do. You never know who is walking through your doors. And the better your product is, the better your culture, the more your clients are going to want to be a part of what you do. And I think one of the things that people are afraid of, which you alluded to is, well, if they if they don't have the skills yet, what do I do with them? The better your onboarding is and the better you develop coaches and That's a big part of who you are as a company. It's a lot easier to take a risk and go, hey, this person's a great person. They're going to be a great culture fit. They're truly passionate about helping people. They know what our culture is all about already because they've been a part of it for years. Now we just have to give them the skills, which is the easy part if you're a company that grows and develops people. But if you're like, hey, I've never really invested time and energy in growing and developing people. How am I going to take somebody with no skills and get them ready, obviously, that's going to be a challenge, which again, going back to the first episode on this topic, we talked about, are you a company that grows and develops people? The better you do that, one, you're going to recruit way better, but you're able to take people that maybe don't have the right skill set today and provide them the right skill set in the shortest period of time so that that person can become an asset sooner rather than later. Love it. Yeah. And that and that's 100% like the theme that we keep kind of hitting is like, you don't need more leads, you need more leadership. And so if it means leading a team member to join you, leading your clients to the promised land of results, leading yourself, um, that's our pushback, me and Matt uh, on the fitness industries. You don't need more leads, you need more leadership. And that's again, the common theme we keep hitting. So yes, you can turn a client by leading them to become a coach. But they do need to have again, some some things that you see some, um, you know, like, uh people skills you know like they need to be easy to talk to obviously if they're like hard and uh, rough to talk to and they're not outgoing like you said dynamic that's a perfect word are they someone you want to be around that you would pay to be around because that's essentially what our clients are doing like i'm paying for access to this person right so that's essentially what you're looking for in a coach a client turn coach and we also just don't want it to turn negative like what you're gambling with is it doesn't go good and you decide they're not a good fit are they going to cancel? They're going to talk bad about you. This business owner is a hot mess. They don't know how to like run a business. They don't know how to train me. I didn't get good training. And now, you know, this this can all go terribly wrong. So again, be picky and make sure that it's a good fit. Um, now, the next one would be prospecting at a local big box gym or with other local trainers. And so like Matt said, like you could friend some local trainers. Um, you could go to a gym and hire a trainer and, and you know, see if there's ever interest for them to jump ship. I personally have never done this, but I know other gym owners that have. And essentially, it's one of those things that I think it comes with your intentions and how you approach this. If you obviously go in and you're trying to, like, you know, ruin someone else's business and steal their team and you're literally going in, that could be looked at as negative. And, they, and the person you're recruiting could say, I would never go work for that person. Oh, my God, they're coming into a gym literally trying to be a vulture and steal their team. But if it's something that organically happens, like you have a friend, and that's why I say it's better if they do like a three-way introduction, like you have a mutual friend that introduces you, you happen to meet each other, um, you friend each other on Facebook, you start talking, like that's probably more of an organic way for it to happen. And that way it doesn't feel forced and like you're trying to like laser in and steal somebody from somebody. But, you know, that's something that you could do. And then I've even seen independent trainers. This is something I have done. I have hired a trainer just because I like having a coach. I like someone designing my workouts or pushing me. And I find out that they're struggling with the whole marketing and sales side of things. They're like, man, it sucks being an independent contractor. I didn't know it'd be so hard to find tr- clients. I'm having a hard, I don't like selling them. I, I hope that just the workout does the job. And I offer them a job. And what do you know? They take it because they would like to just have someone fill up their plate and get nonstop clients. And they don't have to, they could turn off marketing and sales. They don't have to worry about it anymore. They can just focus on fulfillment. That's something I have done. So it's like a slight different. They're like an independent trainer, but they, you know, they weren't an employee of, of the, of the gym. So that's another tactic. Anything throw in on that, Matt? Yeah, a thing with that, obviously, like where I live, we don't have a ton of like big box gyms that employ tons of, of trainers. But whenever I go and visit other places that that have that, like I just look at it as there's a bunch of trainers going around that probably aren't making a lot of money. If you were to just become a member of that gym and, and make friends with those people and have conversations with those with those coaches, 
as a member of that gym, you don't even have to hire for those services. You know, you friend them and they get to know what you do and, and what you're about. Um, and you're not actively recruiting. Cause I do think that's kind of a crappy thing to be doing is like going into somebody else's business and, and actively recruiting. But if you're just genuinely nice to people and getting to know people, um, and two, the other thing is like, I'm always, I always say everything's a test. Like you could just be observing, like who's doing a good job and, and seeing who has the right personality, because if they treat you differently, because you're not a paying person to them. That tells you a lot about their character as well. So being able to have conversations with them and see what their personality is like and see how they treat you and how they treat other people that aren't paying them, like that tells you a lot about their character, right? And just start building a relationship with them, I, I think is important. And I've even seen people recruit, it's crazy, uh, recruit people at different service-based businesses based off of their personality. Um yeah. The one of the one of my best hires ever. Um, he applied for us, but I knew I was gonna hire him before he even interviewed. And the reason why is because one night he served us pizza at, at a local pizza place. And the amount of attention and intentionality and how much he cared and like mm. how he could hold a conversation and just how genuine of a human being he was. I'm like, if he did that serving me pizza. What is he going to be like if I hire him? Oh, yeah. my God. Right. And I've heard countless stories of people's best hires being people that are a service based person, whether it's a waiter, whether it's a I heard one story of somebody was the person that served their their froyo like every Friday they would come in and have a conversation. And they ended up recruiting uh, that person away because of his personality was so amazing Right. So if you start opening your lens to what's the type of person that I would want in my culture, what's the type of person that I would want serving my team? You, you talked about that filter, right? If mm -hmm. your filter is only they need to apply and then that's when I'm going to look at them, you're doing yourself a disservice. So start opening that filter to possibilities of people that are in service based businesses that give you an amazing experience that make you feel good. Cause guess what you're trying to do for your clients, give them an amazing experience and make them feel good. So if they can do it there, they can do it somewhere else. Right. And you can give them the skill. So always be looking with that, that, that mindset and you'll be amazed that way you eventually start finding. I love it. I love it. Yes. Yeah, so but funny thing, I actually, same thing at a Starbucks, there was a gal that would like remember my drink and her customer service is amazing. I was just like, let me rescue you from this place because uh, I think our culture is better. I know Starbucks is definitely a, a well more well-known brand, but like you can make an impact on someone's life if by applying your skill set. Um, and so, yeah, it, it definitely ended up being a, a transition that happened. And so she stepped into the role of doing like lead follow-up and admin and just showing that customer service. But I just felt so taken care of. They say a lot of times you refer a business because you literally want your friends and family to go through the same experience you did. You got to go to this restaurant because they took so good care of me. I want you to see what it's like. I want you to watch that movie because I was blown away and of all the plot twists, I want to see your reaction when you go through it. You're literally wanting someone else to experience what you experienced. And so the same goes with people. You experience people. And so when someone gives you a great experience, you're like, I just want all my friends and family to get around you. And I want them to feel what you bring to the table. So I, I love that. That's a great one. Um, okay. Final one, big one, guys. We're going to go down a rabbit hole on this on a future episode. And that is to create an internship program. And I know that interns definitely get a bad rap. There's a lot where they're just like a coffee runner and they're just, you know, they're just pimped out you know like they're told to clean the gym and like go get me coffee and just like they're just basically treated like trash and so if they can get into an internship that gives them real world experience allows them to dip their toe into a job opportunity and ask themselves is this the right job am i you know working towards something i want to do or is this time to make an audible and pick something else but the way that you do this again just the overview quick version we're going to do an episode where we deep dive into it you got to get connected with a local college or university that has a great kinesiology department, exercise science, something of that nature. And you want to get with the you know head of that department and ask, number one, 
can I give you an email blast to blast out to all the students once a quarter? And it, in a perfect world, can I come and tell them about it live and in person and present to them? And you could put together a quick slide deck, doesn't have to take up the whole class, 10 minutes, but present it to them and essentially share with them what they're going to get. And again, Matt brought it up, WIIFM, what's in it for me? Everyone's favorite radio station. So we don't accept everybody. Just because a student applies doesn't mean that they get in. They have to be a good culture fit. And, you know, you're just looking for things like schedule. Like if they're doing like a crazy school load and they have tons of classes and they just can't commit to any of your social session times, it's not a good fit. Um, culturally, if there's something you don't feel like it fits your your brand and your culture, like just because it's free labor, don't take it. You know, you, you get what you pay for. So it's not everyone's accepted. It is a application and then we'll see who gets accepted. And so we have a great working relationship. We do this with our local uh, colleges. We have two we really partner with the most, but we, we we run it three times a year. And every time we'll get anywhere from four to 12 interns. And then we divide them up over our locations, depending on where they live and what's the most geographically closest for them. And boom, what do you know? Those are some of our future hires. Some of my best team members that have been with me four to five years came from an internship. We're, we're literally their first. And I told them we're their last job. Like you're, you guys can't go anywhere. Right. So we could claim that, but they then go and they, they present at that school and say, I'm a product of the product. I took the internship. Here's how it changed my life. And it's just like having a client tell another person thinking of joining your program, why they should join the program. Right. The boss is always going to say it's awesome. You need third parties saying it's awesome. And so, um, they get experience running sessions. They get to get on a high performing team. They get to grow. They get to apply what they're learning in the classroom in the, in the real world with real clients and extra bonuses. They could get a good paying job out of it. So there's nothing but wins. And so if you guys haven't done this, I'm telling you, it is worth the effort to go onto the campus, shake some hands, get those relationships going and build out that because it is a farm system. It can literally feed your business and allow you to open multiple locations. Imagine if you can sleep at night knowing you have an unlimited amount of team members. And now the only thing holding you back from opening more locations is your ability to grow leaders and, and have the budget for it. And so that really can help you get excited about growing your business, right? Matt, I know this is huge for you, dude. Someone just came to you and had a one-on-one -on -one consult about an internship program. But yeah, what, what is it that you teach on this? If there's anything you want to share. Yeah. So we've, you know, we've been uh, at the forefront of the, the internship program, but like anything that we do inside of our business, we don't want to just have an internship program. We want to have the best internship program on the planet. Cause guess what? When you believe that you have conviction, when you have conviction, you can go and go and sell. If you're just another internship program. And again, like if you're just an email blast and they're blasting out, here's the 20 internship opportunities that you have, you're not going to stand out in any capacity. So the first step is you have to go build a relationship with the internship coordinator, the department head, whoever is really influencing the students, and you need to create a relationship with them. So because what ends up happening is students go to them and say, hey, I'm looking for an internship. What do you recommend? Who do you think they're going to recommend the, the place that they already have a relationship with, the place that's going to pour into their students and give their students a great experience, right? You're going to be the top of the list because most of them, everyone else is just a name on a piece of paper where you actually have a relationship with them and they know that you're going to take care of their students. So we've built out a massive curriculum and it's not just, hey, get better at your skills. Like we're going to grow and develop them as human beings. We're going to teach them leadership skills. We're going to teach them self-awareness. They're going to learn the soft skills that they've never learned in college. And they're going to be a completely different person. Ours are typically 12 to 16 long, 12, 12 to 16 weeks long, depending on the semester. But they leave going, I learned more in four months at this place. I got more out of this place in four months than I got in my entire four-year college degree. A lot of people just have an internship where it's like, hey, come and shadow and, and be our gopher and we're going to treat you like crap and we're going to treat you like an intern. That will not grow your internship and that will actually ruin your reputation, which goes back to the first episode when we talked about your reputation. What is your reputation? Like now 
pretty much everyone fights for our internship and now everything is is second fiddle compared to what we provide. The other thing that we do that to stand out is we pay $400 a month stipend to our interns. You don't have to do that, but I'm telling you right now, the fastest way to stand out is pay them some money. They are broke. They are hurting for money. It at least pays for their gas where everyone else is not providing them anything and it's not paid. So we also go into the schools and we recruit. I used to I used to go into any time they would invite me in, I would go speak. Um, and we would recruit people that were not even interested in, in this as a career path, change their mind that they saw that this could be a career. And I would share them my story and the opportunities that we provide. And then we created a high-level internship video, which was basically a testimonial video of how great the, the experience was. We got them to sign up, give us their information so that we could follow up with them to schedule an interview. Because I made a big mistake one time where uh, we expected them to follow up with us to to schedule in. Oh, my God. It was such a waste because pretty much no one did. Um, So we now have their information. We have them as a lead. And then we follow up and we're selling them all along on how great we are. But the minute that we get into an interview, they need to start selling us why they're a good fit for for what we do. Um, So it's a lot of work. but. I'm telling you right now, it's the most important thing for us to be able to continue to grow and fill our gyms with high quality coaches. During COVID for, I think it was three semesters in a row, we didn't have an internship program because we couldn't have one. And it nearly crippled us because we were hiring three to five interns every semester, high quality interns that are already trained, bought into our culture, ready to go. And then we couldn't hire. Uh, and it really crippled us for a long time and it hurt really bad. The best thing that ever happened was when the COVID restrictions released and we re-kicked back our internship program. Um, and now we're always have people in the pipeline ready to go, highly trained, highly motivated, highly, uh, excited. Right. And, uh, just awesome to have, but you got to feel good about what you provide and has to be a win for those interns. It's not just extra hands for you. You are growing and developing them. And we actually have an internship coordinator where 90% of her job is leading our interns because it is that important uh, for a business. So especially like you don't necessarily have to have one if you have one location, but if you want to start having two, three, four, five locations, you have to have an internship program going year round uh, because you're going to have hiring needs year rounds. Yes, I love it. And it, final thing I'll say on that is students are also some of my favorite team members because they're in a learning and growing phase. And so they're used to taking notes and they're used to needing to study for a test and they're used to like meeting, like class is another version of a meeting. And so they're just in this like organized mindset at versus like the deadbeat college students just kind of hanging out at home with mom and they got nowhere to be and nothing to do. And so like, you want that person that's in that professional mindset preparing for career, and then they tra- translate very nicely into you know working with you. The second one I'll give you guys as a bonus is hiring veterans. I personally have had a very good experience working with veterans. And I think, again, translation-wise, they had to do fitness. They had to have early mornings. They kind of had to have this gritty lifestyle. And now it, it, it's kind of what happens in fitness. And so I'm proud to say we actually got all four branches now on my team. That was like something that I was like a goal of mine. I wanted to check that box. So we have all four military branches represented on our team. And so it's really cool. And again, they had to do PT, you know, physical uh, testing, and they had to do fitness every day and they had to wake up early. And so that, what do we do as coaches, right? It's just like fitness and, you know, leading people. So get connected if there's any local VAs or veteran events or veteran organizations. And a lot of times they don't know what they're going to do when they get out of the military. They're kind of like feeling like aimless, like, what am I going to do when I'm done? And that's something that, again, has been really rewarding and giving back to them as well as students. I'd say, you know, right right there with them is the veteran community. So that's a bonus one for you guys uh, as we wrap up here. So that ends up being 13 sources to find a Rockstar coach that we gave a Matt. So, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, The only other thing I want to add to the internship stuff real quick is. The cool thing about interns too is they energize your team because now they're leading and they're growing uh, the the interns. And the other thing is 
they want to put a show on for the interns. So they actually elevate their game, their energy increases, how they show up is always better. So there's an increased energy when we have interns in the building and you think it would like be the opposite, but I'm telling you right now, like it will energize your team and they look forward to having the the new interns because they get to be kind of the, the head honcho and they're teaching and they're coaching and they're, they're the man and they're the woman and people are looking up to them Um, and they have status. So it, it works both ways and it just, super impactful um, on your business. And I look forward to us going even deeper into that topic because I think every gym uh, should make that a staple of what they do because there's just too many benefits to not do it. Yep. So guys, we're going to wrap up here, but I do want to tell you what's coming here soon. Uh, First thing you should know is we're going to continue this recruiting series. We're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is follow-up, following up with people who apply how to filter, how to screen, how to choose the right person, because this is huge. This is something I'm actually mentioning in my book that's going to be you know, released by the time this podcast goes out, is that if you are a small business and you have a small team, let's say you have a team of five, every person represents 20% of your team. If you have a team of four, they represent 25%. If you have a team of two, they're 50%. So how critical is it that each one of those individuals is amazing and they're a rock star because they are such a big chunk of your brand and so you know that gets filtered down the more team members you add but that's no reason to drop your standards so we're going to talk about how to filter and screen so you only let rock stars to the door all right and there's a phrase i'm going to be teaching on called if they're not gold we hold and that's the mindset we all want to adopt if they're not gold we hold um so that's what's to come. One more announcement before I let you guys go. We are opening enrollment now for the Fitness Empire Mentorship. You're working with me and Matt on a deeper level. This is not open enrollment all year long because we want to let people in, close the doors, and now service the hell out of them. And that's what we do in all of our businesses. So it's no different in this one. So if you guys want to enroll in that, go to yourfitnessempire.com. Read what it's all about. If it sounds like the right mentorship program for you, go ahead and enroll. It's only 10 bucks a day. So I'm super excited to roll that out and help our peers in the fitness industry to grow their fitness empire. Matt, any final words as we wrap up here, sir? No, the only thing I would just add on the the fitness mentorship is the the way the difference would be is obviously we got to give you guys high level stuff and, and stuff that you can take away tomorrow. But we didn't give you the the exact headlines, the exact scripts, the exact follow up process, the exact. We can't do that on a podcast, but we can do that inside of of the mentorship, so that again you can take our thirty years of experience in the fitness industry and and take the best practices and be able to apply them right away and not have to guess. You get to know uh, because we know what works. We've been in this for a long time, and we're always looking at what's the best practices and always creating the best practices. And we've done all the failing for you. So you can just take that and apply it. And uh, this is one of the most important things in the business. I always have people come to me and say, what? I can't hire. I'm struggling. I can't get great coaches. So make sure that you follow along with this master series on recruiting, on hiring, on onboarding your team. And if you apply what we're teaching you, you will take your business to the next level and really start to transition yourself as the CEO of your business and have the greatest amount of impact on everybody that you get to serve. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Keep changing lives. Hey, guys, before we let you go, I want to share with you the details about the Fitness Empire Mentorship. We are now enrolling for it. And this is something that me and Matt have come together because we are wanting to help the fitness industry, the industry that has given us so much, we want to give back, all right? And that's why we are making this a very, very low price so that all gym owners are not priced out and everybody can enjoy this coaching and mentorship experience. So it's only $10 a day, if you can believe it, to join this mentorship program. So if you guys go to yourfitnessempire.com, sign up, what we are here and on a mission to do is to help you to impact lives. Yes, there will be business talk, marketing and sales and leadership and team recruitment, but at the end of the day, we're really gonna be looking at clients getting results and client experience. That is the big thing that we wanna help you solve. And it starts with you and it goes to your team and it goes to all the systems that you guys 
uh, use day to day. And we're going to deep dive into all of this stuff in the mentorship. So if that sounds like something you want some help with, again, go to yourfitnessempire.com. We'll see you in the mentorship.